Hey everybody and welcome back. Today I'm going to take on one of the most difficult tasks I have ever taken that is to review for authenticity the Fast and the Furious. There's no question that the Fast and the Furious changed a lot when it came to the car scene. The first thing it did was introduce us to the power of the import tuner car, which was something that we were not really accustomed to and a lot of people really got on board with it. It was something that was new, it was inventive, uh, and it was exciting. Unfortunately, the Fast and the Furious does have problems. The first and foremost is that it's a cinema movie, so things are gonna be explosions and blown out of proportion, and things are gonna be inaccurate, and they're made really to be flashy to catch the eye of the person watching it. And for some reason, there are some points in it technically that are not very sound. So the plan today is to take the movie apart look at all the different sections of it, and then we're gonna figure out what works, what doesn't, and kind of clarify things so those of you who are new to the scene will not have the same problems that a lot of the kids in 2000 had when they first were introduced to the movie, and there was a lot of bad quotes that happened. So let's, let's get right into it. <laughs> Okay, the first thing we're going to review here is the Civic scene. Uh, is it possible for a Honda Civic to run underneath a truck the way they're seeing here? Uh, unfortunately, that is totally not accurate. I have seen vehicles go under trucks before, but they're really low and a lot lower than these cars. These trucks have been lifted so that that is doable. It is something I would never recommend anybody try as any kind of stunt whatsoever. It's very dangerous. So unfortunately, uh, that's the first one thing we're going to debunk right off the bat. I don't know. How is it? Every day for the last three weeks you've been coming in here and you've been asking me how the tuna is now. It was crappy yesterday, it was crappy the day before, and guess what? It hasn't changed. I'll have the tuna. No crust? No crust. Yeah, the tuna sucks. Thank you. The car you see in the magazine is a Honda Del Sol. It is from August 2000 Super Street and it's owned by Ed LaMarca. So if you want to look that article up, it is actually a really cool Del Sol. And at the time, Del Sols weren't very popular. So when that car came out, that's I think that's why they featured it in the movie. <laughs> Nice dragon hose there. Okay, this is a common misconception about how street races are. A lot of the cars you're gonna see in these scenes are not street racing cars, they're show cars. And there's a big difference. With this scene, you're gonna see a lot of cars that have a lot of good paint, they're gonna have a lot of good uh, vinyl stuff done to them. They're gonna be all about the appearance of the car. Uh, and street racing cars really don't have that kind of vibe to them. Street racing cars can be very bland. There's usually not a lot to them. But if you want to be fast, weight reduction is the big thing. So having a you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars sound system in the car is, is not what you need to race. Uh, but yeah, what we're saying here is really cinematic for show. It's to make you excited about the cars. And it, to be honest, it does that really well, so. Oh, I, I would have paid a hundred bucks if he said, ooh, tank. LS motor. Nice bogger system, the T4 turbo Dominic. You see the AIC controller. It has direct port, nitrous injection. Yeah, and a standalone fuel management system. 
not a bad way to spend ten thousand dollars okay this is one of those things that kind of bugs me uh, the Eclipse came with four different trim levels. The first was the RS, the second was the GS, the, the third was the GST, and the fourth was the GSX. The last two, the GST and the GSX, were powered by the legendary 2 liter 4G 6.3 4 cylinder, uh, a turbo motor that is, I mean, it, people have made really big numbers with that. That's been in the Evo, it's, it's had a, a big history and, and a lot of history of making power. Uh, it does take a lot to get into it, but and it's a very finicky motor, but in the same respect, if you saw that, like a GSX drive up, an all wheel drive car launches at 4,500 RPMs, yeah, that'd be a tough car to go up against. This is not. This is the naturally aspirated four cylinder. Either it's either an RS or a GS. And what it's had is it's basically had a turbo popped onto it. So it's making probably about 200 horses. And what he's done is basically thrown a ton of NOS into it. And I don't know, I would probably have been a little bit hesitant i wouldn't have been excited as everybody is seeing with this i mean yeah you put some chrome on it and you did some engine management like whoopee you know uh, a lot of times with these cars and not to knock the guys that put the money into them they're good cars i mean there's they're really cool looking but in the same respect you're going against a 276 horsepower rx7 that is i mean even though it's not made to drag it's a fast car uh, and does it compete effectively yes it's going against another integra uh, so and another Honda Civic so it's you know what I mean okay so yeah I can see how you made it but really this is just Toretto picking on people you know what I mean like hey let's find the cars that are all way slower than my RX-7 I'll put a little NOS into it and go and I don't know that just it bugs me and maybe it's just me but what the hell is going on around here streets closed pizza boy find another way home Goddamn street racer. There's a couple of different things in here that just never happened. Number one would be a four way race. Uh, nobody ever raced four people at a time. It's always been two by two because that's how drag racing happens. It's a one on one thing. Um, do they race for that kind of money? Yes, they can. Uh, have I seen it really infrequently? Usually, if where you're racing for that kind of money, it's some kind of big grudge match. Um, it's never straight on a flat line. Uh, obviously the RX-7 as we said has a lot of power uh, so the thing is is if you're a Honda Civic that's not making as much power as he is chances are you're gonna want to have a gap between the two so there's a handicap so part of that negotiation of saying how much money you're putting in would be based on how far between the starts would be so the RX-7 for instance would probably have a car length handicap to the Civic so that it could be a fair straight-up race most of the races I've seen would probably race for a couple hundred bucks if that. Uh, rare and few and far between would you ever race for pink slips, which is a, you know, like he's racing for slips right now in his race. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here that's really not accurate. Have they blocked off streets before? Yes, I have heard of that. I've seen them block off highways. But again, that's a really, really rare occasions. Most of the times you don't want to bring attention to yourself. So your races are not going to be on some sort of main road. It's going to be off in the middle of nowhere, uh, which, you know what I mean, this is, this is obviously acting like they took over some main road and and did the race and for cinematics that's very cool so yeah cool scene a lot of stuff you can tear apart in it Okay, this is a tough scene to unpack. What they're trying to say is, is that the engine built up enough pressure and it was throwing bolts into the cabin of the car. And that's just not possible. Uh, between you and the engine is called a firewall and it's basically a big reinforced metal block 
that is made so that the stuff inside the engine does not come flying into the car. The only thing that really gets piped in is coolant and that is for your climate control. So when you turn it to hot, the air blows hot and that's pretty much it. But none of that would have been associated here at all. If you're kind of a car guy, it's just a scene that really, really irks you to see it. I'm like, why did they do this? But um, they did it, so there it is. And again, it's something to go with cinematics to make it interesting to watch, so. Dude, I almost had you. <laughs> you almost had me? You never had me. You never had your car. <laughs> Granny shifting, not double clutching like you should. You're lucky that 100 shot of Nas didn't blow the welds on the intake. So after race discussion is just a part of racing. The thing that I want to go over that really just haunted us for years and years is the word double clutching. And double clutching is not used. It never has been when it comes to drag racing. So if you are using the word double clutching and it is way too much for me to explain during this video but if you've ever used double clutching in this way please stop and I want you to go look it up right now and try to understand exactly how double clutching works so you will not make that mistake again uh, about the only thing he said in there that I think was accurate was the granny shifting part that okay I can see that but how did you know he was granny shifting he never would have even been as close to the race end as he was, and he definitely wasn't. So, so basically, it's just a crack. So I don't. It's a weird scene for me, but anyway, it's again cinematic. It's made for fun, and I will let my obsessive compulsiveness go. Slowly. What the hell is this? What do you got there? This is your car. My car? I said a ten-second car, not a ten-minute car. You could push this across the finish line or tow it. <laughs> Couldn't even tow that across the finish line. <laughs> no faith. Oh, I have faith in you, but this isn't a junkyard. This is a garage. Hey, pop the hood. Pop the hood? Pop the hood. Two Jay-Z engines, no shit. And what did I tell you? I retract my previous statement. I'm probably a little bit more obsessive compulsive about this scene than I should be. But let me go into the details of it. Number one, every Supra of this style came with what's called a 2JZ engine. That is a straight six motor that came both in naturally aspirated and turbo. The turbo motor is a big deal. The problem is, is this motor is naturally aspirated and they're really acting like it's a turbo motor, like it's some big exciting motor. So if those of you who knew would have seen that and said, well, it's just naturally aspirated motor, go get a turbo motor and now we can get excited. Now that really means, why are we keeping the car? Because the car is burnt out. And if you've ever worked on a vehicle that's been burnt out, you know there's really no saving it. It's things are melted. Their structural integrity is not there. I would literally say get that hunk of crap out of my yard and go find me one with a turbo that is actually in some kind of shape. What kills me is, is I don't understand why they didn't do that here. Like it would have been so easy to find, you know, something that was partially broken and bring that up and just say, hey, I found your car. Maybe had some front end damage or something like that. If you had need a frame stretch, you need something. Okay, that would have been impressive. But here it's like, this car is completely useless. Like we could take the motor out, but what, what would be the point? We're just gonna go back and get a turbo motor anyways. Get over here and give us a hand. Looks like you got all the help you need, brother. Now, I think this is funny, and this is a little bit of bonus information here. The Maxima that Vince drives there is actually an automatic, and they put, I want to say it's ethyl glycol. Basically, it makes the wheel slip a little bit. So if you pay close attention, as the vehicle takes off, it actually tries to shift into second gear. Then when it bogs down a little bit, it shifts back to first. So you kind of hear it bog. And once you hear it, you can't unhear it. So pay attention. Nice 
nice car. What's the retail on one of those? More than you can afford, pal. Ferrari. <laughs> This is my favorite scene in the movie. The Ferrari F355, driven by the producer Neil Moritz, drives up to the hero car, the brand new Supra, and basically issues a challenge that my car is worth more, so therefore it's better. This was really a big deal, and people don't really pay attention to this scene as much as they should. And the real question was, is could the Supra win this race. So let's put it into perspective. First, we have the Ferrari F355, not really made to be a drag car. Its takeoff is gonna be a little bit sluggish, no problem. It makes up for that with 375 horsepower and being super light. The Supra, on the other hand, is a really heavy vehicle, but in comparison, the Super could make a lot more power. Now, if you're wondering how much power, this vehicle was actually tuned to a little bit over 600 horsepower. And what's even better is the gearing of it was made to be a drag car and it, it had a little bit of leg. So that means that once it took off, it has a lot of leeway that it can just continue to pour power on. The other thing which I think that people missed here is that the guys in the Supra are willing to lay it all on the line, drive any way they need to to win this fight. And I think that's something that's important to say that the Ferrari driver would not be that interested in risking anything to get that win. Once that Supra took off, it would have crushed him. It would have been ugly. It would have taken off the line, it would have kept legging, and it probably would have had a lot more power to spare going down the line. So the chances are the Ferrari guy would have given up probably at the 30 foot mark and called it a day. So yes, Supra at the time was the new king, if you will, of the street and basically tried to usurp the exotics. Uh, unfortunately, exotics down the road make you know, 700, 800 horsepower. So different kind of fight today, but back then, yeah, this was a big deal. On a side note, the statement more than you can afford made by the Ferrari owner is in relativity to the price tag of the Ferrari being eight, you know, over $100,000 to purchase the vehicle. Somebody actually did rebuild this exact Supra to be exactly how it was in the Fast and Furious. And just for the record, it cost him over $100,000. So yeah, the more than you can afford thing, not really flying anymore. What's up, man? Welcome to Race Wars. Great, thanks a lot. Probably one of the most accurate scenes in the movie is the section where we walk into Race Wars. Uh, the question you may ask, do we race on old airstrips? And the answer to that is absolutely still to this day. And it's a great place to race your vehicle. Uh, I don't know about the safety side of it, that probably a lot more safety than we see here. It looks very minimal. And uh, funny enough, the technical director, Craig Lieberman, is in this one scene, a guy that's very uh, avid about talking about Fast and Furious. So if you ever look him up and you want to know about, more about the inside workings of the Fast and Furious, he loves talking about it and he has a lot of good information. So look him up. He's on Instagram. Uh, but like I said, other than the one flag guy, yeah, I would say a lot of this stuff looks really good. It's very accurate, very cool. And I gets a little bit of nostalgia when I watch it because you know, you feel that like, oh, I've done this and you get a little of that adrenaline pumping. So just watching that scene. So good scene. I used to drag here back in high school. That railroad crossing up there is exactly a quarter mile away from here. I'm green. Going for it. 
So if you watch the trailer for Fast and Furious, this is probably the scene that brought you to see the movie. It is both a epic scene and heartbreaking all at the same time, but it is definitely exciting. The Charger represents all that is muscle car, everything that makes both the car show and the drag race the effectively unbeatable car on the strip. And here we have the upstart Supra running nose to nose up until its apocalyptic end. So the real question here is, could the Supra actually win? So let's look at a tail of the tape. The Supra, as we said before, was making about 600 horsepower, really heavy car. Uh, Charger in the same, really heavy, but with a lot of internals removed. You can see that it has a roll cage. This car was made to race. The thing that really kills me here is, is that the Charger made 900 horsepower. And that's really the definer of our discussion today. Even with the Supra making nitrous, doing everything it's doing, putting everything on the line, there's no chance. This car has drag slicks. It's made to do what it's doing. It was probably under nine seconds for its run. Now, if the Super was making a thousand horsepower, which is what a lot of people brag about, this would probably be a different discussion. But unfortunately for this particular discussion with these two cars, the Charger wins hands down. The lesson that we were supposed to learn here is that the newer cars are cars that you don't want to underestimate and those are debates that we still have today about what is faster what's better the reality is is any car done correctly is a good track car or a good drag car or whatever and that was really the point of the movie was to say that and that's why I think that they ended it with basically a tie was to say that we're just as fast as you are and that is really what changed everything it blew up the pre-owned market in ways that we could not have understood. It basically reintroduced a lot of cars that a lot of us had forgotten. So I'm really glad that the movie came out. Again, it's one of my favorite movies. Even with the flaws, I can watch it over and over and over again, which is why I was really excited to do this video. I guess the lesson is I probably should take all of my obsessive compulsiveness, throw it in the trash, and just enjoy the movie for what it is. And you know what? I would suggest you do the same. Thanks, you guys, for watching. You have a great day, and we'll see you in the next car thing. Have fun. Bye. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Nothing else matters. For those 10 seconds or less, I'm free.